Homoousian, Greek, Homoousian translit. Homoousian, lit. Same in being, same in essence, from homos, homos, same, and ousia, ousia, being, or essence is a Christian theological term, most notably used in the Nicene Creed for describing Jesus God the Son as «same in being» or «same in essence» with God the Father. The same term was later also applied to the Holy Spirit in order to designate it as being «same in essence» with the Father and the Son. Those notions became cornerstones of theology in Nicene Christianity, and also represent one of the most important theological concepts within the Trinitarian doctrinal understanding of God. Terminology <inaudible> 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 The term homoousian, the accusative case form of homoousios homoousios consubstantial", was adopted at the First Council of Nicaea in order to clarify the ontology of Christ. From its Greek original, the term was translated into other languages. In Latin, which is lacking a present participle of the verb to be, two main corresponding variants occurred. Since the Aristotelian term ousia was commonly translated in Latin as essentia essence or substantia substance, the Greek term homoousios was consequently translated into Latin as coessentialis or consubstantialis. Hence the English terms coessential and consubstantial. Some modern scholars have pointed out that Greek term homoousios is properly translated as coessential, while consubstantial has a much wider spectrum of meanings. From homoousios, coessential, the theological term homoousios, coessentiality, was also derived. It was used by Greek-speaking authors like Didymus of Alexandria and other theologians. Topic: <laughs> Pre-Nicene usage. The term homoousios had been used before its adoption by the First Council of Nicaea. The Gnostics were the first to use the word homoousios, while before the Gnostics there is no trace at all of its existence. The early church theologians were probably made aware of this concept, and thus of the doctrine of emanation, taught by the Gnostics. In Gnostic texts the word homoousios is used with the following meanings Identity of substance between generator and generated Identity of substance between things generated of the same substance. Identity of substance between the partners of a syzygy, for example, Basilides, the first known Gnostic thinker to use homoousios in the first half of the 2nd century AD, speaks of a threefold sonship consubstantial with the God who is not. The Valentinian Gnostic Ptolemy claims in his letter to Flora that it is the nature of the good God to beget and bring forth only beings similar to, and consubstantial with, himself. The term homoousios was already in current use by the second century Gnostics, and through their works it became known to the orthodox heresiologists, though this Gnostic use of the term had no reference to the specific relationship between father and son, as is the case in the Nicene Creed. <laughs> Adoption in the Nicene Creed The Nicene Creed is the official doctrine of most Christian churches, the Catholic Church, Eastern Orthodox Church, Oriental Orthodox Churches, Church of the East, and Anglican Communion, as well as Lutheran, Reformed, Evangelical, and most mainline Protestant churches, with regard to the ontological status of the three persons or hypostases of the Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Oregon seems to have been the first ecclesiastical writer to use the word homoousios in a non-Trinitarian context, but it is evident in his writings that he considered the Son's divinity lesser than the Father's, since he even calls the Son a creature. It was by Athanasius of Alexandria and the Nicene Council that the Son was taken to have exactly the same essence with the Father, and in the Nicene Creed the Son was declared to be as immutable as his Father. While it is common to find assertions that Oregon and other early apologist church fathers held subordinationist views, Laria Ramelli discussed the anti subordinationism of Oregon. Both the Nicene and Athanasian creeds affirm the Son as both begotten of, and equal to, his Father. 
If so, many concepts of the Holy Trinity would appear to have already existed relatively early while the specific language used to affirm the doctrine continued to develop. Some theologians preferred the use of the term homoousios, homoousios or alternative uncontracted form homoousios, homoi omicron ousios, from homoios, homoios, similar, rather than homos, homos, same, common in order to emphasize distinctions among the three persons in the Godhead, but the term homoousion became a consistent mark of Nicene orthodoxy in both East and West. According to this doctrine, Jesus Christ is the physical manifestation of Logos or the Word, and consequently possesses all of the inherent, ineffable perfections which religion and philosophy attribute to the Supreme Being. In the language that became universally accepted after the First Council of Constantinople in AD 381, three distinct and infinite hypostases, or divine persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, fully possess the very same divine ousia. This doctrine was formulated in the 4th century, during the Arian controversy over Christology between Arius and Athanasius. The several distinct branches of Arianism which sometimes conflicted with each other as well as with the pro-Nicene Homoousian creed can be roughly broken down into the following classifications. Homoousianism from homoios, homoios, similar, as opposed to homos, homos, same, common, which maintained that the Son was like in substance, but not necessarily to be identified with the essence of the Father. Homoianism, also from homoios, which declared that the Son was similar to God the Father, without reference to substance or essence. Some supporters of Homian formulae also supported one of the other descriptions. Other Homians declared that the Father was so incomparable and ineffably transcendent that even the ideas of likeness, similarity or identity in substance or essence with the subordinate Son and Holy Spirit were heretical and not justified by the Gospels. They held that the Father was like the Son in some sense but that even to speak of Uzia was impertinent speculation. Heterooceanism, including Anomianism, which held that God the Father and the Son were different in substance and or attributes. All of these positions and the almost innumerable variations on them which developed in the 4th century were strongly and tenaciously opposed by Athanasius and other pro-Nicenes, who insisted on the doctrine of homoousion or consubstantiality, eventually prevailing in the struggle to define this as a dogma of the still united Western and Eastern churches for the next two millennia when its use was confirmed by the First Council of Constantinople. The struggle over the understanding of Christ's divinity was not solely a matter for the Church. The Roman Emperor Theodosius had published an edict, prior to the Council of Constantinople, declaring that the Nicene Creed was the legitimate doctrine and that those opposed to it were heretics. It has also been noted that this Greek term homoousios, which Athanasius favored and which was ratified in the Nicene Council and Creed, was actually a term reported to also be used and favored by the Sabellians in their Christology. It was a term with which many followers of Athanasius were actually uncomfortable. The so-called semi-Arians in particular objected to it. Their objection to this term was that it was considered to be UN scriptural, suspicious, and of a Sabellian tendency. This was because Sabellius also considered the Father and the Son to be one substance, meaning that, to Sabellius, the Father and Son were one essential person though operating as different faces, roles, or modes. This notion, however, was also rejected at the Council of Nicaea, in favor of the Athanasian Creed, which holds the Father and Son to be distinct yet also co-equal, co-eternal, and consubstantial divine persons. <laughs> Notes <laughs>